assassination, where were you? I was on the air as a disc jockey in Riverside, California, uh, doing a remote broadcast, and uh, got the word. Spent the rest of the day on the air trying to figure it all out. They played NBA games like the next day, right, or two days later? I know they canceled the they first canceled game. That night. And then yeah. they played games right after that, right? They played NFL they played games NFL that Sunday, yeah. Yeah, I know the NFL thing. I saw the Pete uh, was helping. It's been, well, let's get to basketball. It's been really, I love history, so this oh, last yeah. three or four days have been really, yeah, uh, I guess, cool, but I don't know if that would be the right word when you think about it, but it's been enlightening. Interesting. All right, so do you go with the conspiracy theory or the Oswald Act Alone? Yeah, I think he, I don't know. I'm going with the Act Alone, but I am a conspiracy. <laughs> I think in this one, I think he Act Alone. Can outside events on middle sports, can they affect Oh, yeah, yeah. I think outside events in life, uh, I think that's, if the fan misses one thing, that would be the single thing the fan misses, you know, uh, and coaches, too. And let me put myself in that category. Um, listen, the guy can have an argument with his wife before a game. And that's not even Mike Mill. Uh, and he comes to the game, and, and you don't know that. Yeah, and he's awful in the game, and I'm mad what's going on. He, you don't know. You don't find out. You may find out a week later that something happened at home. You may never find out. And so it's, uh, that's important uh, with us. But monumental events, it's amazing how it affects each individual person. Some are oblivious. You know, as Al McGuire said, give me 12 unaware players. I'll be 12 <laughs> aware players every time. Uh, but some aren't, you know, and you never know. You guys help them. We do it all the time. We do it whenever we don't uh, have a shoot around or back to backs. I, I've done that for years. Um, you know, instead of waking them up earlier and going to the facility or doing something yesterday where they play two back to backs, you let them get their legs and you you meet. We did that. Uh, we we didn't have a practice when we came back from that three game road trip, and we did the same thing before the Minnesota game. Uh, so that's new for this group, but uh, I think it'll work well for. I think it's a red flag for both teams. I think 12-30 games are just tough games. Uh, coaches love them because you have the rest of the day to break down film, uh, and then you're fresh. You can go to bed, even though you don't. But you know what I'm saying. I think players probably are split. I guess right down the middle. Some love them, some hate them, and it's both ways. So I don't think. It was too quick of a trip for body clock stuff. I don't think that matters. But I do think, uh, you know, I, I know as a player I hated it uh, because it's, the games you play well was great because you had the rest of the day. But it just felt like sometimes in the middle of the game you were like, wow, it's the third quarter, you know. Uh, and that's what you're always real for. As a visiting coach coming in to LA to play those games, you prepare any As a visiting coach uh, coming into LA or any. In LA. No, I mean, listen, <laughs> at the end of the day, guys are going to do what they want to do. And, um, I always actually thought the visiting team uh, had the advantage in afternoon games because uh, it takes the home team out of their norm. The visiting team is already out of their norm. They're on the road. And so I've always felt that way. There are a couple of Um, just hope my, um, you know, I had ACL, so I mean, and I'm hoping that's not what it is. I don't know, but it just didn't look good, and uh, really sad. He's, I, I'm, I, you know, I can't be like a fan of opposing players, you know. But if I was one, he would be right at the top. And it's not just his play; it's how he carries himself, and how he plays, and how single-minded he is about winning and. and being a pro, so I'm really praying um, that he's okay and that he's it's just not something bad. There's a connection, there's no doubt, uh, but there's not really any deep relationship. No, I know him because I, you know, I talked to his brother, and you know, I don't know him well, but. Um,
when you're from some place, you, you tend to know all the kids who are from that same place. And um, he's the first one that's been at home, you know, and, and kind of captured the spirit of the city. So you're just hoping that he's okay. What's it going to take today to uh, face the Kings? Well, they're playing well. I mean, they're, uh, they've won two, two games in a row, and so they're, uh, they're energized right now. Uh, we've only played them 17 times this year already. Uh, so we kind of know each other, you know. Um, you know, what I do like watching them, they've kind of found their identity. I thought the preseason, you know, with a new coach and all of that, some teams you never find it over here. I think they actually know who they are already, and that's a good sign. If, if you're them, I mean, we're still finding ourselves. And I think they have. They they know that at the beginning of the game, they're going to post the ball. And then when Isaiah Thomas comes in, they're going to run a pick and roll play. It's, and it's guaranteed. They're running post and then pick and roll. And so they kind of know who they are offensively. Um, for a young team, uh, that's that, that'll bode well for them. Yeah. Well, I think they're trying to create a pace, number one, um, and they've, they've done that. Um, um, they've added shooting, you know. Uh, uh, Macmore, he's going to be a, he's going to be tricky. You know, he may not be right now, but he will be, and he can shoot the ball, and and they need that around Cousins. And then they've added, uh, they by moving some of the veterans to the bench. Now their bench is really good. I mean, I think they're third or fourth in the league in bench scoring and fifth. So. Uh, I think it's they're pretty good. I don't think people know them yet, but they're gonna be a good team. Looking at your, your defense, where is it in terms of where you thought it would be at this point or uh, it's behind. Uh, it's um, we've had spurts, I mean the Minnesota game, um, you know, so we've had some spurts um, where you can know it's there, but we're 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 not where I wanted to be defensively yet. Uh, we are scoring a lot of points, so I don't look at the point part of it. Uh, I'm looking more at the percentage part, and uh, that's where we have to do a better job. And then for me, the biggest part is um, we have not become that team yet that if you need a stop, you're going to get a stop. That's what we have to become. I don't even care what the percentages are. When we become that team, that's the team that I want to become. Yeah, I, was, I did a terrible job the Oklahoma game with that. I mean, I went in with my self clock at 28. I think he played 35, so that's just awful. And I got to do a better job um, with that. He just, it's just not right for him. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Somebody, we don't have a, a third, another small, or, or small forward. So, um, you know, we're going to have to, you know, jump the game up and do something. But the bottom line is, or Brady has to play more. Uh, but that's just too many minutes for Jared right now. With a game like uh, OKC, do you immediately move on to the next opponent, or do you watch that game afterwards? You know, it's funny, Mike. Um, I probably move on about four times a year, you know, where I just say, I'm not watching this game. Uh, and I almost did it. But then, unfortunately, yesterday we had the day off. And, <laughs> and so... <laughs> After I'd done my Sacramento preparation and Chicago preparation, right. there was still too much time in the day. So I ended up and I went back and I watched the game. And I'm glad I actually watched it. Uh, it was probably the right thing to do. Did you feel like, this is how I felt, but did you feel like it, you guys had made shots, even your open shots, or just a smaller percentage better? It would have been a totally different ball? Well, it, it's funny. I thought, if you remember that game, uh, the first two possessions, we got not open threes. We had like wide, uh, open. wide open threes. I mean, I probably could have hit the rim. Uh, they were so wide open. Um, you know, and we missed them both. And, you know, I look at that, you know, when you look at the what if game, that's 6-0, you're up. You know, but they didn't go in. And, um, I just think we still, you know, we're getting there. Um, but I, I want us to get to the mentality that we really believe we're going to win two in a row against two good teams on the road. And, uh, that's that's a mindset. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Ralph, thank you. Thank that you. was great. Thank you. <laughs>